I'm Ines, I am a PhD student studying insect flight, um, hablo español, I run out of things to say, but today I'm going to talk to you about something quite random. Now, our next contestant is Ines Dawson. Ines is a DPhil student working on the biomechanics of insect flight, and in her spare time she learns martial arts. So I think for your own safety, you should give her a big round of applause. Seven. A musical apple. Radioactivity. You're all looking pretty confused, thinking, well that was kind of random. And um, that's kind of how I intended it to be, but was it really? You see, randomness is quite tricky business because we all think we understand what it is. But, you know, an event that is unpredictable amongst a sequence of events. But the truth is, we're just not very good at generating it. If I were to ask you to think of a number between 1 and 10, I bet that over a third of you will have thought of 7. And if you ask me, that's just not random at all. So when it comes to some things such as encrypting your sensitive bank details or creating a free prize draw, it becomes very clear that we need some kind of random machine. Now, we can find randomness in the wild, such as in radioactive elements. As they decay, they release electrons, and the interval between each electron being released is actually random. But most of us don't have this laced up to our computers in order to get random numbers on tap. So instead, we have to find a special algorithm. Hopefully you're with me on the irony it is to have a special algorithm that spits out random information. It just doesn't really exist. But the closest we have are pseudo-random number generators, which, if you look inside, they look a little bit like this. Now, please do not be scared. It's really easy. This does not bite. A and B are both really big numbers, and M is a really big prime number. And X is basically any number you choose, not a random one, such as the time right now. And you just plug it in, multiply it times A, add B, divide it by M, and you take the remainder. That's what that mod means. And this is your first pseudo-random number. And you can get this number and put it back in again. Multiply times A, add B, divide by M, take the remainder, and you have your next pseudo-random number. And you can keep on repeating this process to generate a big long list of pseudo-random numbers. Now, the problem is that eventually you will get a number you've seen before, and then you'll just start to look for the numbers you have. But, to be honest, it is pretty decent, and it works quite well. And anyway, remember at the start I mentioned, we're pretty bad at generating randomness. We're also very bad at detecting it, to the point that our brains like to find patterns where there aren't any. And a few years ago, a load of people complained to Apple, saying that their shuffled iTunes playlist simply wasn't random enough. So Apple actually had to rewrite their random number generator into a pseudo pseudo random number generator <laughs> in order to conform to people's idea of randomness. So overall, I think we're all pretty bad at this whole randomness thing. And as to whether I think from the start was random or not, I'll leave that for you to decide. <laughs> Well, if the lottery is using a good random number generator, you shouldn't be able to. Um, but there was apparently a fraud like that in the Maryland lottery back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. I st I'm still convinced that sh Apple Shuttle doesn't work properly. <laughs> they changed it again, actually. <laughs> so apart from the iPod Shuffle, why do we care about random numbers? Um, well, we care about it for many reasons. I think the biggest one that probably concerns people is keeping the passwords and your bank details safe. So when you're actually encrypting it on the internet, you probably all know that there are lots of prime numbers involved and random numbers. And the random number is quite important to actually prevent people from guessing it. And it's important that it is as truly random as possible, because if they have the algorithm, they can find out this random number and then de-encrypt it. Um, and as for me, I'm a scientist, and being a scientist generally involves repeating things with different experimental ways over and over again. And it's quite important to avoid, say, time affecting your experiment by randomising the trials that you use. And as I've shown before, we're actually very bad at thinking of randomness ourselves, so we need something that can give us that randomness. 
Hi. Um, just wondered, loving randomness is, is quite random, and I wondered why you love randomness, why are you inspired by it? Um, so the idea of this talk, actually, in during the Fame Love Heats, my very first line, I messed up, so I thought, I wonder if I can make a talk where it doesn't matter what the first line is. And I thought, the first line of random. Um, but then I did decide that was a bit of a cop-out, so I did make the first line mean something in the end. But that's where I came from. Thank you. So thank you. <laughs>